before we begin today's video, I'd just like to highlight another video I've made called the Hardest Disney Fan Art Challenge Ever. In this video, I sent myself and two artist friends a challenge. We had to draw three Disney characters with a time limit of 30 minutes per drawing. This video not only documents how each of us got on with this difficult task, but also features artist tips for drawing and deep analysis of Disney character design. So please go and check out this video soon. You won't regret it. Thank you. Howdy folks, Jamboreeki here, and welcome to another episode of Jamboreeki Orange, the show where I let my patrons decide what I'm going to review. The options for this month's poll included The Care Bears 2 A New Generation, Batman Assault on Arkham, Arlo the Alligator Boy, Jungle Cruise, Vivo, and Aquamarine. They chose Jungle Cruise. In 1556, Don Aguirre had a dying daughter, so he led the Spanish conquistadors to South America to find the legendary Tears of the Moon. Unfortunately, a lot of Aguirre's men didn't survive the journey, and he struggled to continue his quest. Luckily, a tribe used the Tears of the Moon to restore Aguirre and the Conquistadors. When Aguirre demanded that the tribe hand over the Tears of the Moon, the chief refused to comply, so Aguirre stabbed the chief and burned the tribe's village. Aguirre's brother Francisco tried to stop him, but Aguirre stabbed Francisco too. The chief then cursed the Conquistadors. Not only could they never leave the Amazon jungle again, but they were also made to be immortal. Francisco then trapped all the cursed Conquistadors in a hole, where they all turned to stone. Cut to the year 1910. Lily and her brother McGregor hire a skipper called Frank to take them down the Amazon jungle river to find the Tears of the Moon. However, Lily and McGregor begin to distrust Frank, because he's a compulsive liar with a history of conning. At the same time, the evil Prince Joheim is after the Tears of the Moon too. Joheim frees the Conquistadors and promises to lift their curse if they can retrieve an arrowhead necklace that's around Lily's neck. One thing I'll give this movie is that it manages to make the Jungle Cruise ride itself integral to the film. The movie embraces the fact that it's based on a riverboat Disney attraction. Heck, you could say that it's proud to be inspired by it. The boat is almost like a character in its own right too, showing as much screen time as the humans and having to survive the same obstacles as our heroes. What we have is a very literal cinematic adaptation of the Disneyland attraction. I'll admit that this does make the film kind of gimmicky, because it's trying very hard to emulate the feel of a theme park ride, which isn't a bad thing if that's what you want, but if I wanted that experience then I could have just gone on a movie simulator at Disneyland or Universal Studios. You might get a sense of deja vu while watching this film, because it's more than obvious that Disney is recycling the plot for Pirates of the Caribbean The Curse of the Black Pearl. A tough woman with a rebellious attitude to gender norms for her time, teams up with a roguish charmer who has a weakness for booze, as they get caught up in the legend of an undead curse that's connected to a necklace worn by our heroine, and there's an authoritative antagonist on our hero's trail. Of course, there are differences here and there. I don't want to say that Jungle Cruise is a complete rip-off of Black Pearl, that would be unfair, but once I noticed the glaring similarities, I immediately found myself being constantly distracted, because the comparisons are so easy to make. Look, I know that not every film can be 100% original, but I found it hard to appreciate Jungle Cruise on its own independent merits, because I struggled to find things that made it unique. That being said, this is still a fun film for what it is. I mean, if Disney was going to rehash the formula from any Pirates movie, at least they picked the best one. A film that proved that these tropes and ideas work well together. Jungle Cruise is basically Black Pearl, but with an Indiana Jones coating, which is kind of cool when you think about it. Also, like I said before, the film is basically a Disney attraction come to life, and that does give the movie an energetic fast pace, even though Jungle Cruise is a slow ride. <laughs> it's hard to get bored when the movie is trying to emulate the adrenaline of a theme park ride, backed with the spectacle of an exotic jungle atmosphere. At the same time, the film does break up its action with quiet scenes of characters relaxing as the boat gently flows down the river, which gives us a chance to not only get to know our characters, but also lets us take a breather from everything. As generic as this film is, it at least understands that not every scene in an action movie needs to be intense or dramatic. I have to say, Frank, these piranha are so good. Can't quite place that flavour, though. It's blood. Right. I'm to bed. To be honest, what made this film watchable for me was its sense of humour. It has this old-fashioned classic style of comedy that's a mix of British sarcasm and screwball farce, which works quite well for a Hollywood 1900s adventure caper. Come on, I got your pants. Trust me. Hold on! Frank? Frank, get it. 
Hold on. Come on. Frank, please. I got it. Frank. I don't got it. Our central romance between Frank and Lily is mainly founded on tension and animosity. Their arguing and banter can become quite irritating sometimes because they rarely give it a rest. But like I said before, the film has a good sense of humor, so their jabs at each other can be funny. So you want to be the Darwin of flowers? And I want to help as many people as I can. You want to save the world? I didn't say save the world. It's very noble. Well, thank you. It's also very stupid. You are deeply unpleasant. And off key. Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt share some pretty good on-screen chemistry too. I can buy that they're attracted to each other and both actors are charismatic enough to bounce off the other. Let me help you. No, it's my turn. Okay. You gotta listen to her. It's perfect. Pretty good. Yeah. Now we can just cruise. So, a big twist in this film is revealed when it turns out that Frank is immortal and was once Francisco. I will admit that I did not find this to be a shocking revelation because, well, our main character is a con artist with a mysterious past and this film features immortal villains. It's pretty easy to add two and two together. But I did find it entertaining seeing how Frank could use his immortality to his advantage because he's always confident that he can fake his death. And he'll often use this to outwit villains. It's interesting seeing Frank looking back on how he spent his 400 years of immortality. From the grief of losing close friends to the lengths he went to add meaning to his life. Unfortunately, these flashbacks are pretty much the only time when Frank laments on his immortality. Eternal life is a fascinating concept for a lead hero, but the film sort of downplays the trauma that must be haunting Frank, mainly because its focus is on giving audiences a good fun ride and making sure that Dwayne Johnson looks cool and macho. Not to mention, when Frank gives up his immortality to save the day, the movie tries to play it off as a sad ending. But I knew deep down that Disney wants to milk a franchise out of Jungle Cruise, so I expected him to come back right away, and he does. And what do you know, a sequel has been announced. To be honest, I would have praised the film if it gave its action hero a tragic goodbye, because Frank deserved to be finally free of his curse of immortality and rest in peace at long last. I actually find it more disturbing than uplifting that Frank has been given an extended life just so the film can have potential sequels, even if said life is mortal now. Now, I'm sure that you would like to know my thoughts on the character of McGregor coming out, especially because I identify as queer myself. While I do appreciate that McGregor is a gay Disney character who isn't just a five second cameo, but a leading hero who gets lots of screen time, I don't think he's a good example of positive queer representation, and think Disney can do a lot better. I've seen much more offensive caricatures, but the film certainly leans into its gay stereotypes. He's hypersensitive, cowardly, and high maintenance. His main roles in the film are to either serve as the comic relief snob, or be used as a hostage for the villain to hold over Lily. Heck, he's more often than not the butt of most of the film's jokes. It's Masato. Hmm? It's made out of fermented spit. You're drinking spit. The film does let him stand up to Frank in one scene, and he ends up being the one to defeat the villain by the end, but McGregor never earns these empowering moments, because the movie has spent a lot of its energy punching down McGregor. The jungle doesn't care how pretty your dresses are, you're never gonna get all your luggage on my boat. Not mine. Mine. And I assure you, every one of these items is entirely necessary for my survival. Another thing I didn't like is how Disney pussyfooted around his coming out scene. McGregor doesn't get to directly say he's gay, but rather implies it with suggestive dialogue, referring to his sexuality as interests that are elsewhere. This tiptoeing around McGregor proudly saying he's gay is very frustrating. It pees me off that Disney bragged to the media about McGregor's coming out, yet decide to remain coy about his sexuality in the actual film. I also wasn't comfortable with Disney casting Jack Whitehall, a straight man, as McGregor. Yes, an actor's job is to pretend to be someone else, but many gay actors rarely get offered queer roles in Hollywood. So it's quite insulting that Disney didn't cast someone actually gay for the part particularly when they want to boast about being LGBT plus inclusive as a company. McGregor isn't the only poor stereotype in the film though. The native characters have also been given a lot of flack for being offensive cliches. And I can see where the criticism is coming from. This one is a driver. Driver. 
Yes, use that for anything over 200 yards. To conclude, Jungle Cruise is a predictable, gimmicky, and unremarkable movie. Though to be fair, we don't get that many period action films nowadays. So I'll give the film that. And it's still a fun, easy to digest movie with a good sense of humor and fairly engaging set pieces. Fans of the theme park ride itself will be happy with the movie, and there's certainly an audience for fast paced popcorn blockbuster films starring A list actors. I just can't say in good faith that the movie is worth $30 for the Disney Plus premiere action. Unless you're a huge Jungle Cruise fan who really wants to watch the film from home, you might as well see it in cinemas instead or wait until Disney Plus takes off the lock. So those are my thoughts on Jungle Cruise. What did you think of this film? Let everyone know in the comment section below and don't forget to click that like button. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel for more film and animation related content. So what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Jamboree Key Orange? Well, that's entirely up to my patrons. The options for the next episode include Paris of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, My Hero Academia, Two Heroes, Straight Out of Nowhere, Scooby-Doo Meets Courage the Cowardly Dog, 21 Jump Street, and The Haunted Man. Mansion. Now, don't forget that you have to be a patron in order to access this poll. What is a patron? Don't worry, I'll explain. This is my Patreon. It's a site for my fans to support me financially on through a monthly basis. Those who donate are called patrons. Patrons can donate as much as they want and are welcome to stop donating any time. In return for their generosity, patrons are given exciting rewards based on their pledge amount. These rewards include early access to my videos before they go up publicly on YouTube, behind the scenes content, their name in the end credits of my videos, a chance to request a review of anything at all, and much more. Pretty excited to find out which film my patrons choose next. Cheerio, folks.